Hey guys, it's Ryan I'm back again on the Syntax Byte. Today I have my first ever React Native tutorial for you. So I've recently been working on an app with React Native. It's my first time using React Native. I am familiar with uh, iOS from like way back in the day, so I'm not super familiar with it. And then I've done, uh, you know, just regular Kotlin Android development. But this is my first time using React Native. And as always, when I try out a new technology, I love to share uh, my experience with you guys in the form of tutorials, mostly going over the stuff that I found difficult. And one of the things that I found a bit difficult to get working the way I wanted, uh, or working at all really, was React Native's flat list scroll to index function. So in my app, I sometimes need to scroll to a particular index of the list. Um, and I found that difficult to implement. So I'm going to go over how to do it today, both with fixed items, which is fairly easy, but we'll quickly go over it. And then as well with dynamic unknown item heights. And this is where I really struggled, uh, but it's not too bad to implement. Uh, it's not a perfect implementation, but it's pretty easy to get a pretty decent solution going. You just, it just doesn't seem to be well documented. So uh, we're gonna do both that today. So starting off, I have a simple list here. This is a pretty easy list and you can see the items are basically all the same size. Um, in fact, I've defined a fixed height for my items. So they're all 40 in size. I gave this ugly yellow background color because why not just so we can see the items, I guess. Um, and yeah, I mean, this is just, you know, 20 random items. This isn't real data that I'm working with, but a simple list where you have one line of text you know it's easy to set a fixed size for this sort of stuff uh, and it also makes the scroll to index function really really easy to use so when you have this case what you want to do is you want to implement a function called get item layout and that's fairly easy to implement when you have a case where you just assign a height in your style so you do get item layout uh, you're going to take the data and index and then you just return an object so it's going to be length so this is the length of each individual row so it's just going to be styles dot uh, list item dot height so whatever your row height is you could use a constant for this but here I'm just linking it to my style because I know obviously if I change this then it will change that as well um, then you need to do offset. So this is like the total of the items above it. Um, so not including the item, but total of the items above it. So the top item should be zero. The next item would be 40 because there's one item of 40 height above it. So this is simple. It's just styles.listItem.height times index in my case. And then we just pass the index as well. So you need to implement that and return an object. So again, this is really, really simple math for uh, when you have a fixed height, but obviously if you don't know what the height of your items is gonna be, because in my case I have, you know, user generated content being displayed in text um, blocks. And like, I don't know how big or small that content may be, right? So I mean, uh, they could have a paragraph, they could have a single line of text. Uh, you know, either is valid, one is probably more common, but I can't really bank on it, right? So uh, unlike here where you're just restricting the height, but we'll, we'll cover the dynamic case in a moment. So let's continue with implementing just the static case. So what you do is you go down here, you do get item layout, you pass it as a prop, and I'm gonna do this dot get item layout dot bind this. And that should be that. So with that implemented, what we can do is in our component did mount, I'm just going to set a timeout to scroll to a certain index. And my list isn't very big, so we'll make it fairly at the top. Otherwise, we actually won't be able to tell exactly what index we scrolled to. So I'm just going to do um, this dot flat list ref dot scroll to index. We'll scroll to index and you have to do index is three. So you have to pass this as a params object, you can't just pass three because you can uh, turn off the animation as well if you want but it's it's animated by default so if you're just if you're happy with animation you can just pass the index like that uh, but that took me a little bit to figure out too it's pretty weird and then uh, yeah so then then we can say we're just gonna do this like 
I'll wait like two seconds after the app opens so we can see it like refresh and be at the start of the list and then we can see it move down so so if we go ahead and refresh now and just just to note about the flat list ref there so I have that listed here so ref is and then I set the ref um, to actually get a reference to this flat list component so we can actually call this function on it. If you were using a function component rather than a class component, I think a class component makes this a little bit easier. Um, but you know, it's perfectly valid to use a function component, you would just have to use the use ref hook, and then set the current value of this reference to um, that down here. And then you would have to flat list ref current, obviously, and there, there would be no this. Um, so if you're using function components and wondering how to do it, look into the use ref hook or just switch it to a class component. Either kind of works. So we see refreshing. Uh, we see that set timeout isn't you know a function, so that's cool. There we go. So we see it starts up. So yeah, guys, I don't know an additional refresh and it's working. So I tried changing this to be like a function body, and then I changed it back and and it worked. So we can see that. I'm just gonna refresh, and we can see our thing scrolls to item three exactly like we would expect so if you are having trouble maybe just i don't know refresh it a couple times that was weird um but that's that's okay so so that's how you do scroll to index with a basic fixed height um list it's really simple and it's never really gonna fail because you have this get item layout so even if the items aren't rendered yet um it's easy for the flat list to figure out where an item would be and scroll to that area. And then when the list loads, obviously it's going to be correct. However, you might be hit with a case where um, that's that's not quite so easy to determine. So what do we do then? Well, first let's set ourselves up a case where that's not quite so easy to determine. So I'm going to remove this little optimization and you should get some performance optimizations as well by um, implementing get item layout so you should do that even if you're not using this function and you happen to have a fix with list but I'm gonna remove my fixed height here okay and we've just commented that out for now all right beautiful so what I'm gonna do here uh, I'm actually gonna add a lot more items just so we can kind of make sure that it fails because it might not fail with 20 items and then I'm gonna do we're going to kind of do this. So this is our string and we're going to repeat it a random number of times. So we're going to do repeat math.floor uh, math.random times like 30. So that we'll get like a random number of item labels. So our labels are going to be kind of a random length. So let's go ahead and refresh that now math.random is not a function because it's not so math.random and there we go so now you can see our items are of all sorts of length as we scroll down here our scroll bar is kind of changing as as it's reloading the amount of items so it takes a little while for the items to load up the result being of course that when it loads up it's not going to know right away you know where a certain item deep down the list is and if we go ahead and refresh it you can see we get completely different item sizes. So not every item is the same every time we load the app and this is completely unpredictable. I mean, you can see here item 12 is like huge. Item 13, there isn't even a, a text there. It's just like the padding, you know, so it's like, this is completely unpredictable. So how do we deal with this? So if I just go ahead and try and do this here, we're going to scroll to like index like 127. You see it says that scroll to index should be used in conjunction with get item layout. So that's what we implemented before. Or on scroll to index failed. Otherwise there is no way to know the location of off screen indices or handle failures. So we can't know the location of an off screen indice. It's essentially impossible here for us to figure that out. We need the app to render those items and then figure out how tall they are based on what it rendered. However, there is a way that we can try and approximate it based on what's rendered. We could use an average height for the items and then tell the list to scroll down and keep scrolling until it reaches that item. So we can definitely respond to a failure. 
So we have to go ahead and try that um, option. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to implement a, a method called scroll to index failed. Okay, this is going to take some params, uh, just an error actually. And so in here, we're going to first try and scroll to that area using the average item height. So we'll say const offset equals error dot average item length times error dot index. So this will give us an average item length based on what it's already rendered. Um, so depending on how variable your items are, like this might be pretty accurate or it might be way off. Um, in the case where I have these like totally random and differing heights, this tends to be way off and it tends to be way low. Um, so that's that. Um, times error dot index, but this will kind of jump us closer. So then what we need to do is we actually need to scroll to that area. So we need to do this dot flat list ref dot scroll to offset. And then we say offset. So again, it's like this awkward params object thing passing. So you can't just pass the offset, but you have to pass it in brackets so that you have a, a JavaScript object with the parameter offset which is going to be equal to this. Obviously, this is a shortcut like I could write offset like that, but you don't need to. So yeah, just be aware of that. It's caused me some trouble. And then what we can do is we can do a set timeout. And this is essentially going to be like a recursive function, but it's not obvious that it's recursive because it's going to end up being called by the prop when this fails again. So um, then after like 100 milliseconds, we've scrolled closer. Some more items should be loaded. We should be kind of in the vicinity. So now we can try and actually scroll there. So we'll do this dot flat list ref dot scroll to index error dot index. Um, and we'll do index because we can't use the shortcut. Uh, and we'll do that after just 100 milliseconds. So we'll give it 100 milliseconds. We'll try again. Again, if it fails, it's going to come back to this until it succeeds. So it's basically going to recursively scroll there. And we should see now uh, it's still mad, probably because I didn't actually specify it. Yeah. So we need to do on scroll uh, to index failed is equal to this dot scroll to index failed dot bind this. Okay. And give it a try. And so you can see it kind of tries jumping and eventually it does make it down to uh, index 127. It's a little awkward uh, just because in that particular case 127 had zero items. Let's try again here. This should get it. Yeah, exactly to 127. So it should eventually get us exactly on 127. Um, and there you go. So it's a little bit awkward. It takes a little bit longer than the previous item. I'm not really sure what happens if we kind of try and interrupt it here while it's doing its business. Like we'll just try and yeah, it kind of just does its business anyway. Um, but there you go. So it's like a recursive finding function um, that, you know, it'll keep trying to load and, and keep trying to move um, until it finds what it wants. So I hope that video was helpful for you guys. Um, this was a point that confused me in my app development. Um, so maybe I'll have more React Native in the future. There seems to be a ton of YouTubers actually talking about React Native. So um, I'm not really sure where I fit in the space, if you know what I mean. But this is one thing I didn't really see a video on. And I've like barely even seen a quality stack overflow answer on this. So hopefully it was helpful for you guys. And I will catch you in the next video. If you did enjoy it, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you next time.